Question 18. Here is some information about the times in minutes 80 teachers took to get to work. Okay, this table here represents the time. So, for example, 25 teachers took between 40 and 60 minutes to get to work. Okay, um, on the grid, we want to draw a cumulative frequency graph. So I'm going to extend this table to draw a cumulative frequency table. So my time is going to change here. So I'm going to have a new column for time. And um, let's thin my pen out a little bit. And um, we're still going to have between 0 and 20. So I'm going to have 0 to we're going to have 20. And then we're going to have um, because we're going to do a cumulative frequency, our next one is going to be 0 to 40, and then 0 to 60, excuse my writing here, and 0 to 90. Okay, so my cumulative frequency, well, there's going to be 12 um, teachers that took between 0 and 20 minutes but between 0 and 40 minutes there's going to be all of these teachers and all of these teachers so that's going to be 44 teachers and between 0 and 60 it's going to be all of these teachers here which is going to be 44 and another 25 which is going to be 69 teachers and then between 0 and 90 it's going to be all of the teachers which is all of these added together which is 80 and we're told here that it's going to be 80. Okay so to draw the cumulative frequency graph we need to be careful here so we're saying no teachers um, took no minutes so none of the teachers lived at school so we know that we're going to start at 0, 0 and then I'm plotting these here against these here and it helps to just draw a little ring around what you're plotting so you're going to plot the 20 against the 12 um, etc okay so 20 minutes 12 teachers so that's going to be that point there and then 40 minutes 44 teachers 40 44 42 44 and then 60, 69, it's going to be there, and then 90 and 80, and that's going to be there, okay? And then we want to draw a smooth curve going through those points, I'll try my best. Okay, and that's going to look a little bit like that. So that's our cumulative frequency graph done. Okay, part B says estimate the number of teachers who took between 50 and 70 minutes to travel to school. So we're looking for between 50 and 70. So let's draw so a little line between 50, which is going to be there. and 70. Okay, so what we're saying here is that, right, so 74 teachers um, took less than 70 minutes and 60 teachers took less than 50 minutes. And the difference between them is going to tell us how many teachers took between 50 and 70 minutes. So we want to do 74 take away 60, which is equal to 14. So I think it's 14 teachers um, took between 50 and 70 minutes to travel to work. Okay, question 19. Uh, part A. A, B, C, D is a rectangle and then these inequalities describe the shaded region and we want to write down the values of P, Q, R and S. So X is between P and Q. So our X coordinate lies between 
P and Q, so it's going to be between this line and this line here. So that point there is going to be negative 2, and that point there is going to be 6. So I think that's going to be between negative 2 and 6. So P is going to be negative 2 and Q is going to be 6. And our Y coordinate lies between R and S. So that's going to be between um, Aha, okay, so the x um, axis is the line of symmetry, so that means that this distance must be the same as this distance. So because that's a 3 there, that's going to be 3, and that's also going to be 3 there. So here we're going to have 3, and over here we're going to have negative 3. So that means r is going to be negative 3, and S is going to be 3. Okay, so the smaller number needs to go there, negative 3 and 3, and the same way over here we had negative 2 and 6. Okay, question 19b. The um, graph shows, sorry, the grid shows the graph of y is equal to x plus 2. That's that line there. And on the grid, we need to identify the region represented by y is less than or equal to x plus 2. And y is greater than 3 take away x. And x is less than or equal to 3. Okay, so we've got the line y equals x plus 2. We also need the line y is equal to 3 take away x. So, um... If I just write that here, that's the line we're going to draw. y is equal to 3 take away x, um, or that's going to be the same as y is equal to negative x plus 3. So that's going to have a gradient of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 3. So you know it's going to go through that point there. And every time you go one across, it's going to go one down. So it's going to go through these points here. And I should be able to now draw that line. And that's going to be the line. Okay, and that there is going to be the line y is equal to 3 take away x. So I'll label it over here. Let's leave that over here. Okay, that's the line y is equal to 3 take away x. Okay, and then we also need the line x is equal to 3. So I'm going to draw that in. So x is equal to 3 is going to be any point along this line here where the x coordinate is 3. So let's draw that in. Okay, and that line there um, is going to be x equals 3. So we want x coordinate to be less than or equal to 3, so it's going to be on this side. Um, our y is going to be greater than 3 take away x, um, and that's a strict inequality, so what I should have had there is a dotted line. So I'll change that now. And, um, and we want it to be greater than that, so it's going to be above that line. And we want y to be less than or equal to x plus 2. So it's going to be below this line here, which can be a solid line. That's the only strict inequality, so that's the only one that needs to be dotted. So I'm going to label my region below there to the left of this line and above this line. So it's going to be that there. Okay, question 20. Um, f of x is equal to 3 to the power of 2x and g of x is going to be equal to x cubed for all values of x. We need to work out the value of f of 1 plus g of 4. So f of 1, let's work that out first, that's going to be 3 to the power of 2 times 1. which is going to be 3 squared, um, so f of 1 is equal to 9. g of 4 
that's going to be equal to 4 cubed and that's going to be equal to 4 times 4 times 4 which is 64 so f of 1 plus g of 4 is going to be a 9 plus 64 which is going to give me 73 so the answer for that one is 73 part b says work out the value of the inverse of um, g of negative 27 so I'm, first of all I'm going to write down what the inverse g of x is going to be well if g of x is x cubed the inverse of x cubed is going to be the cube root of x okay so that's the inverse of g of x now the inverse of um, negative 27 is going to be equal to negative 27 the cube root sorry of negative 27 so a number times by itself times by itself that gives us negative 27 is going to be negative 3 negative 3 times negative 3 is 9 times negative 3 gives me negative 27 so my answer for that one is going to be negative 3 now we can check to see if we're right because if I now put a negative 3 into my g function I should get negative 27 so negative 3 cubed is in fact negative 27 so that works okay um, part c says work out an expression for g f of x so that's going to be um, g of f of x okay that's what that means now I know f of x is 3 to the power of 2x so I'm going to do the g of 3 to the power of 2x okay so my input over here is going to be cubed so that means that g of 3 to the power of 2x is going to be I can replace that x with 3 to the power of 2x and then cube it so I'm replacing that x with 3 to the power of 2x it says give your answer the power of 3 in its simplest form so 3 to the power of 2x I can multiply these two powers together and that's going to give me 3 to the power of 6x ok I'll put it over here 3 to the power of 6x ok part D um, one of these graphs is a sketch of y is equal to 3 to the power of 2x we need to decide which one ok so a couple of things we need to decide here um, right let's first decide where this is going to cross the y-axis so when x is equal to 0 what's y going to be so um, when x is equal to 0 then y is going to be equal to 3 to the power of 2 times 0 which is 0 and 3 to the power of 0 is going to be anything to the power of 0 is 1 so y is going to be 1 so when x is 0 y is 1 my y intercept is definitely going to be 1 so it could be that one it could be that one it could be that one but it definitely can't be that one so I can't have a okay the other thing to decide here is as x gets bigger what's going to happen to y so if I made like x a hundred or a thousand I'd have 3 to the power of x was 100 I'd have 3 to the power of 200 which is going to give me a huge number so as x is getting bigger y is also getting exponentially bigger so it's going to get really really big so which of these is showing that the x coordinate is getting bigger the y coordinate is also getting bigger now this one is but I already know that I can't have this one with this one as x gets bigger the y is actually getting smaller so it can't be that one with this one here as x is getting bigger y is also getting bigger so it could be this one and with this one here as x is getting bigger y seems to be just just not increasing at all so I don't think it can be that one either. in fact I know it can't be that one either so it must be C 
C goes through what looks like it could be 1 on the y-axis and also as x is increasing, y is also increasing.